But right now, uh, if Mary is is willing to begin her presentation, I will hand it off. Are you okay with that, Mary? Thank you, Julia. Um, and thanks to everybody for the now session for being the music spot for this really excellent group. Um, man, I have to be able to describe the group to the
conferences that we hold in terms of training for how to deal with friction and uh, grievances within the worker co-op. Um, and one of the things that unions can do is help worker co-op structure grievance procedures and they, in, in terms of handling friction. And then they can also come in and work with people who are having difficulties with each other, providing mutual facilitation. So well, that's a really big help that unions can provide. Um, some unions can help provide affordable benefits to worker co-op members, health benefits, pension benefits, and that kind of thing. It's not always the case because not every union has control over its own pension funds. Often the pensions are controlled by the employer. Um, but that is definitely something that should be looked into if you're thinking of affiliating with the union is what kinds of benefits, what kinds of health benefits, uh, what kind of pension benefits, um, vacation time, sick time, maternity benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, would be definitely something to talk with the union about. Um, and another thing that unions can provide to um, worker co-ops is an identification as a union shop, which many clients look for when they buy services or products from a worker cooperative. So identification as a union shop is a very, it's not something to be it's an important aspect of being affiliated with the union. So those are several ways that uh, unions can help strengthen work, worker co-ops in the workplace. In terms of the big picture, there is no other agency in the United States like the labor movement, the organized labor union movement that provides research about the state's economy for workers, um, and the biggest institutions in the U.S. and in the world. There just is not, there simply is not any other agency in the U.S. movement in the U.S. that can provide that kind of information to workers. So that's a really important aspect of being associated with the union is that you have access to that information, that analysis. We also can stand up with labor um, in an activist way. So those are a number of different ways that worker co-ops can benefit from being affiliated with unions. In terms of why unions would be interested in worker co-ops, um, I guess most of us are well aware uh, about how the union movement is being decimated by the conservative right. Um, so unions are looking for new ways to organize. And one of the ways they're looking at is worker cooperatives. Um, worker cooperatives can provide a new union, a new membership base for unions, and they can also uh, ensure that existing unionized workforces, um, if they're threatened with privatization or if a longtime owner of a business, a unionized workforce, uh, retires and provides support for workers to buy out, then that's one way that labor unions can retain their base, can, can expand or retain their membership base. And of course, with a membership base, they um, retain clout and uh, money through dues. Um, and a not insignificant aspect of why labor unions might be interested in worker co-ops is because the labor union movement, as defined historically, is a constant fight. It's a constant fight with frequent losses. The worker swap movement is a building movement. You're building something that you own, nobody can take it away from you. Uh, they are for-profit businesses. The members are your members. So building as opposed to constant fighting and losses is, is an important part of it. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, 
which uh, which worker co-ops, what, what unions are worker co-ops affiliated with? Um, I don't have a complete picture, but I can uh, list several um, that might be of interest to you all at Worcester at Root. Um, there are a number of printers, co-ops that are affiliated with unions, collective copies in Amherst, Massachusetts is affiliated with United Electrical. Design Action Collective in Berkeley, uh, California is affiliated with Communication Workers of America. Um, PL Printing in Denver is affiliated with Communication Workers of America. Red Sun Press in Boston is affiliated with United Auto Workers, interestingly enough. Keep that in mind because it doesn't necessarily have to be a union affiliation that looks like a perfect fit. Let me repeat that. Red Sun Press in Boston is affiliated with United Auto Workers. Um, and, and Ink Works Press in Berkeley is affiliated with the Teamsters, which, again, doesn't make any sense, but there you have it. So keep in mind that it doesn't have to be a perfect fit if you're looking for a union association. Um, in manufacturing, uh, United Electrical is also uh, associated with New Era Windows and Doors, which is a manufacturing worker co-op. And there are a number of uh, unions like Service Employees, International Union, SEIU, which are affiliated with um, home care workers. Um, there are uh, Teamsters is associated with a cab company in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, here's another one that doesn't fit, Communication Workers of America, facilities with Union Tax, the youth co-op in Denver. Um, and it's and a really interesting one, which I think doesn't exist anymore, is a, is a worker co-op called Lessie Lady in San Francisco, um, which was a, um, a sex shop, um, which was affiliated with Service Employees International Union, or SEIU. So it's just interesting that, um, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of uh, worker co-ops that are created, not all of which are a perfect fit that have worked for these various worker co-ops. Um, the most active union, well, the biggest active unions in the United States right now that are working with worker co-ops are the United Steel Workers. Um, United Food and Commercial Workers and United Electrical. And all of them are very active in, in doing worker co-op startups. They're not just affiliated with worker co-ops that uh, got started by themselves, but these are actually unions that are starting worker co-ops. Um, so any of those unions that I just mentioned might be of use to, to the worker co-ops. Um, the teamsters might be of use to the pedicab project or the green glass project. Um, the communication workers or United Electrical might be of interest to the media project. Um, United Food and Commercial Workers might be of interest to the farming and greenhouse co-ops. Um, and the International Association of Machinists might be of interest to the robotics co-ops. In general, uh, it seems that the co-ops that would be of most interest to you all would be United Steel Workers, and again, don't think of the steel workers, uh, United Electrical, United Food and Commercial Workers, um, Service Employees International Union, or SEIU, the Communication Workers of America, United Auto Workers, and the International Workers of the World. Um, so just to describe to you what some of the projects are that are going on around the United States in terms of union worker co-op overlap, um, the council that I work with, the Union Co-op Council of the U.S. Federation of Worker Co-ops has been operating since 2007. It came out of the Eastern Conference for Workplace Democracy down in Asheville, North Carolina in 2007. We've been meeting ever since then on a monthly conference call to discuss what's going on around the U.S. in various places. And this has grown um, 
with the surprising um, action uh, over these years, about five years, five or six years, and uh, lots of people from all different places in the U.S. are involved in it and even since. We have, a, we have a conference call, people uh, who are working on projects, unions and worker call come on and describe the work that they're doing and share resource information. And any of you are more than welcome to come into that group if you're interested. I think um, Matt provided you some information about the, the union co-op council. Um, one of the most uh, exciting developments in the union worker co-op arena uh, developed in Europe in Berlin when the United Steel Workers uh, developed a collaboration, a public collaboration with Mondragon in Spain, which is a um, many decades old conglomeration of work of worker co-ops and other types of co-ops in Spain, which has been very successful. Um, and that has been brought into the United States um, there is a project now called One Worker, One Vote affiliated with the United Steelworkers Mondragon um, collaboration that is reaching out in all the states to talk to people about unionized worker co-ops, creating worker co-ops, and uh, teaming together to create an effective force. So that organization is called One Worker, One Vote, and they can have services that you can tap into if you're interested, and very excellent um, technical assistance providers who can come in and speak to your, your workers and your participants. What, one of the other interesting developments in the work of co op uh, arena is the Cincinnati Union Co op Initiative, um, which has started. Uh, it's been operating, I think, for about four years. Um, it's a very extensive group of community activists and labor unions, organizers of various unions that are setting up worker cooperatives. The first one they set up was with the help of the United States commercial workers, um, and they set up a farm and were developing a food hub, a food distribution hub. But they also have a project where uh, the, the International Association of Machinists is looking at the manufacture of railway cars in Cincinnati. So it's not, not it's, a, it's a very broad coalition for looking at how they play the new worker co-ops to create good, sustainable jobs. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll close for the moment and take your questions or comments, but before I do that, I'd just like to draw to your attention, as I'm sure Matt has, that um, the Eastern Conference for Workplace Democracy of next year in 2015 in the summer will be held in your town in Worcester. Uh, it will be held uh, at Clark University on July 10th through the 12th, and it's a wonderful opportunity to come in and meet people from all over especially the eastern region of the United States, but really all over the United States and Canada who are working on these projects. So I hope many of you will be able to attend that conference July 10th through the 12th at Walters. Okay. Mary, Mary, what's the name of the Cincinnati organization? I didn't catch it. The Cincinnati Union Co-op initiative. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you have more time there? I have a specific question. Okay. Um, Mary, I'm from Full Trade Petty Tab in Providence, and we actually have been. We just opened a conversation with the Teamsters recently. But recently, I just talked to one of the organizers of the Teamsters, and we have been talking to some options, and it just seemed like kind of reached an impasse of like how we could be supportive of each other. And I'm not sure what, like, what that could look like. Basically, he told me that our work was pretty much the same because we were working on it. And I'm curious okay. to hear what, why you might have said that if you know, or like what process you have to go through to be affiliated with some of the Teamsters. 
Sure. Um, I, I think you have to keep in mind that um, the workers co-op union overlap at this point in time is still very, very nascent. Mm -hmm. So that any, any one local or any one person in the union that you might approach won't necessarily uh, be invested in the concept of unionized work small. And so I think that this would be to identify the, um, the, the worker co-ops that are unionized by the teachers and talk with them about what they did and how they did it and who might be helpful in the teamster network to help you with your local. I also think um, that uh, you don't necessarily need to be affiliated to Teamsters. Um, you know, you might find that um, United Electrical or United Steelworkers would be a better fit for you simply because they're doing, um, they're more active in this arena than some of the other unions. So those are, I would, I would push it to you. I would, I would identify Teamster representatives that are already working with worker co-ops elsewhere and talk with them about how to approach your local. Or number two, talk, for example, United Electrical in Massachusetts is very active. And I think you could have a conversation with them about, and, and maybe I could provide you with some names, or Matt could provide you with some names of people to encourage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess the main reason we're talking about the teachers is because we're in the and you can't office or the international office that's excited about it and is actually pushing it at the local mm -hmm. level, you know, yeah. and then having them talk to the local that you'd be in touch with, because if they hear from their union from the inside, you know, then, then they'll be more open to the... Right. And it just more to seem like the person we're talking to is very excited about us and the work we do, and very excited to hear we were pro-op, so he just, it seemed like he doesn't need to, he has never heard of a pro-op joining. Yeah. He's like, oh, you don't right. have, you guys are the owners? Well, I don't see how you could join this union then. So, right. I think it just seems like a lack of experience, like in Rhode Island, just never been heard of, and the urban seems to be yeah. local there. Yeah. Yeah. I just so, that's what we try to do, is, is, is hook you up with uh, some specific people in the Teamsters Union that have worked with worker co-ops, and then they can get referrals to the national or the international. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. change their modus operandi. Right. And 
and, that's and, right. and their services are different. Wow. All right. Yes, their services will be different. There, some of them might be the same as what they provide in terms of uh, clarifying work processes or grievance procedure processes or grievance procedure facilitation. But that whole concept of fighting and arguing and striking, and it, it's just a very different kind of orientation. So they become a supportive. They become, That's right. Th th their role is to support. And, That's uh, right. The co-op. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And isn't that exciting? How exciting is that, both for the union? I mean, how exciting would that be for union to know that they could build something? You right. know, instead of the constant aggravation, which they frequently lose. Right. You know. Right. Right. That is really, really cool. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from folks? Can we get a... Oh, I, I guess I sort of have one. So so are the Teamsters... Uh, so I used to work for UPS. So I was a Teamster for a while. And so, my, so like if I had a... a sure. If I had like a cooperative or something of that nature, is the team... And I'm asking the Teamsters for our sort of help. Are they are they are they offering things like um, like are they offering access to their their medical benefits and different things by having having your employees become teamsters? Do they get to buy into that support network directly, or is it just sort of sort of like spiritual support? <laughs> well, I I can't. I'm sorry to say I can't answer that question directly because. A lot of unions, I'm, I'm going to use my union, my, my previous union as an example, it was, which was the American Federation of Teachers. I was a teacher in the public school system. Our benefits were negotiated between the employer and the insurance company. So it was the public school, the employer, and the insurance companies that were negotiating. It wasn't the union and the insurance companies that were negotiating. So one of the questions you would have to ask, and I think all of us need to clarify, is which union can provide small shops with benefits? Because the unions themselves control the benefits. And which can't necessarily do that because the shop is not big enough to negotiate uh, a benefit package. Okay. And that's as much as I can say about it. It's yeah. still unclear to me, but I, I've said enough so that you have a sense of. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's basically anything goes right now as long as you can find sort of uh, a partner that's willing to sort of, you know, explore new new legal pr or new frameworks in different partnerships. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so the robotics project, I think, you know, United Electrical in Massachusetts might be a really exciting possibility. Who is that? United Electrical. United Electrical. In Massachusetts tonight, and I can send a name to Matt for both the Teamsters and United Electrical, but that seems like it might be a good matchup for the robotics problem. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mary mentioned it, but United Electrical is a really activist union. They mm -hmm. were involved with the plant takeover in Chicago. She mentioned at the Republic Windows and Doors, which is now New Era Windows. Oh, okay. So they occupied the plant. They were able to expropriate a bunch of the equipment there and they opened a new cooperative out of that so that instead of you know all the, the plant shut down and that kind of stuff so they they're a good they're a good option and just just as an, ex as an example works printing co-op here in Worcester <coughs> they're working with the United Steel workers um, that Mondragon collaboration and I believe they are setting up their pension fund through that co-op maybe okay. some health benefits oh, that's, that's very exciting Do you have any other questions, comments? There's one question. Maybe they can try. Well, that's so quite a little bit. Exactly. I'm going to go to the system of the unions because in 2001, when I was working, entre 
parte, eh, la, de, uh, nunca había escuchado las uniones, ellos dijeron que la unión fue comprada por la compañía para perjudicarnos a nosotros. She was wondering if, like, um, unions have started down now than they did back in 2007. Better what? Like, a better... More rights. Yeah, because they felt like um, they, they had a conflict in their workplace, and um, they basically felt like that the business had bought out the union, um, and so they didn't get to negotiate their rights in their case. Mm -hmm. So this was not a very strong union. It wasn't a very strong union. Uh, Probablemente, pero um, no, no sé el nombre porque yo no sab estaba recién llegada a este país y nunca había escuchado de so she just el got sistema de las uniones. She had just heard about the union system, so she doesn't remember the name of the union. Pero digamos mi punto es que um, obviamente I'm ahora las uniones están más por más fortalecidas y las personas confían más en ellas, mm -hmm. pero como quiera no es una garantía 100% tener una unión en el trabajo con el historial que, que yeah, hemos tenido. So she doesn't feel like it's a very um, sure thing, the union at all times. Um, just given her history with the union, that experience, she just doesn't feel very confident in what they were able to do. Well, I've heard uh, I'll speak a little slowly and stop at the end of each sentence so it can be translated. Okay. Um, I've heard other uh, concerns like this. This is this is not the first time I've heard this story. Mm -hmm. um, and there, you know, there are some unions that are stronger than others, and the ones that are working with worker cooperatives now which are the United Steel Workers, United Food and Commercial Workers, and United Electrical. Those are the strongest ones. The ones that are starting in the co-op are extremely strong unions, very, very strong, very progressive unions. Um, and, okay. Tell me when the... Okay, yeah, we got it. It's a little static, but we got it. Um, and the other thing is that your, your local, your, your workplace union is only going to be as strong as the workers make it. So if you don't stand up and insist on certain things, then you might not get them. So if, if, if you are the union, you, you are the union, and obviously, in addition to you, there's union leadership. There's what the union brings to the table, and you just need to be careful to get a strong union to help you. So that's, that's another question about the relationship between the co-ops and the unions, is that you have a horizontal structure integrating or interfacing with a hierarchical structure. And how does that work out? Um, I think, for example, in the case of United Electrical, they have a separate section, as I understand it, they have a separate section in their union with worker cooperatives, and so probably that section of the union functions differently from the overall hierarchy. But I also think that unions that are looking at this strategy for worker organizations are willing to be more democratic and listen to the workers more. I think the labor movement is becoming, as time passes, they're becoming more aware of how damn it has been not to be democratic and how much it has weakened them. Because, because it's only the democratic unions that are able to make it through the kinds of struggles that are being imposed at this time in history.
So uh, perhaps we'll take uh, one more question. Anybody uh, have a question? Okay. Well, I had a, I had a thought. Um, I think. Yeah, this is Julie. Uh, I think there's um, like a disconnect in my brain of how a co-op would go from. You know, like what the ask would sound like or what the conversation would even sound like. Because I typically know the unions. I typically know unions in the, just like most people do in opposition to management and you know pro workers. But I think if you know the the conversation has been like oh it would be a different kind of union response to co-ops to to, co-op, to cooperatives. Could you give, like, could you talk more about what that different kind of relationship would, would look like with workers? Uh, yeah, that's a Well, I know, uh, look, we use new era windows in Chicago, maybe as an example of how United Electrical, which was the union for the workers in this condition when, when it was Republic Doors and Windows and the company was going under. Uh, United Electrical came in and worked with the workers to design a buyout to help them uh, stand up in the workplace uh, in terms of demonstrations and speak, speak out. Um, provided technical assistance, provided funding, um, and simply work in an organizing fashion with the workers to make sure that they could take over the business effectively. So it's more like an organizing relationship. I, I think the same thing happened in Cincinnati when they were creating um, Our Harvest, which is a worker co op farm. You know, it's, it's, it's like you all are doing uh, in your in an organizing fashion. You're working together to figure things out, to get the resources you need, um, identify the people that can be of most help. That's what labor is. Labor unions are organizing um, agents and research agents. So. Uh, they can, they can, that's the model. I think it's an organizing model, which is what worker co-ops are. That's an organizing model, you know, a democratic, participatory organizing model. So, and an extra layer of voice for the workers. When, when co-ops go to scale, like the Home Care Cooperative Associates in, in New York or in Mondragon, the, these union councils are another level for workers to make sure that they have a voice. Because even in worker cooperatives, there can be some, you know, hierarchies that form management that that consolidates some power. So, the, it's another way to, to make sure that you know, on the boot, uh, you know, boots on the ground, workers have uh, are make, are uh, have a say. And, and I, I think men Mary mentioned it for grievance purposes too. So there's another mechanism to 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 bring grievances to management. And, Just to continue, sort of elaborate one more time is so the the argument for joining in the national union is that they're sort of the a national level democratic body that your corporation can uh, sort of elect to participate in. Yes, you would be joining a local, but I think what Matt and I have indicated is that sometimes uh, sometimes there are local union members who are aware of this. Uh, organizing model, worker cooperatives, and sometimes they're at the national or slash international level. And um, like the approach to the Teamsters that the pedicab workers describe, you might have a lot more success if you had the names of the people in the Teamsters who would actually work in this way. So it's not necessarily like the national or the local, it's finding people who 
are sympathetic and interested and excited about this model and then building on that. Okay. So Mary, did you have uh, another part to your presentation or any closing thoughts? No, I think I'm just extremely excited about um, the work you all are doing in terms of setting up your businesses, but also in thinking about how to uh, associate, you know, with the possibility of associating with unions. Um, because I think it can really strengthen what you're doing. And even if you don't get there immediately, if you get there at some point, you know, it would be a good thing to think about because um, the collaboration between, I think, worker co-ops and labor unions has a lot, a lot of potential. Very exciting. Very exciting. And hopefully we'll see you all at the concert, the Worcester, in July. See you there. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you.